Hi, my name is Pam Mace, and I'm the Executive Director of the Fibromuscular Dysplasia Society of America, or FMDSA. I know being diagnosed with fibromuscular dysplasia can be very scary, as I myself was diagnosed with the disease many years ago. There is so much to learn and understand about the disease. Maybe I can help by sharing what I know. Fibromuscular dysplasia, also known as FMD, is a disease that causes one or more arteries in the body to have abnormal cell development in the artery wall. As a result, areas of beating, narrowing, aneurysms, or dissections may occur. FMD can appear in any artery in the body, but it's most commonly found in the renal, carotid, and vertebral arteries. In over half of the people diagnosed with FMD, there will be evidence of the disease in more than one artery. There are two types of FMD. The most common type is called multifocal FMD. The artery has the appearance of a string of beads upon imaging. The second less common type is focal FMD. It has the appearance of a tubular narrowing. Focal FMD is more commonly diagnosed in children. 90% of the patients with FMD will have multifocal FMD with the appearance of a string of beads upon imaging. Some patients may be diagnosed with both types of FMD. The signs and symptoms of FMD will depend on the affected arteries and severity of the disease. The most common signs and symptoms include high blood pressure, headaches, pulsatile tinnitus or the swishing noise in your ear, FMD can also present with very serious complications. One in five patients will have an aneurysm and one in four will suffer a dissection. Studies have shown that some women who were healthy but have a sudden tearing of a coronary artery, also called spontaneous coronary artery dissection or SCAD, may have undiagnosed FMD. SCAD was thought to be a separate condition from FMD, but we are starting to understand that many people have FMD as the main reason for their coronary artery tear. It's important to note, however, that the majority of patients who have FMD will never have SCAD. The cause of FMD is not yet known. FMD is far more commonly seen in women than men, resulting in the theory that hormones may play an important role in disease development. It's possible that many factors contribute to the development of FMD. This area requires further research. FMD affects women far more commonly than men, although men and children are also affected. Children present differently than adults and are less likely to have carotid artery involvement. In order to diagnose FMD, the blood vessels must be imaged. Options include duplex ultrasound, CTA, or MRA. Catheter-based angiography is the most accurate imaging study to diagnose FMD. Although there is no cure, there are many treatments focused on managing symptoms and complications of FMD. Antiplatelet medications such as aspirin may be prescribed along with medications to treat high blood pressure. There are also a number of medications available to help control and prevent headaches. In some cases, an attempt should be made to improve the flow of blood through a severely narrowed artery. The kind of treatment used for narrowing depends largely upon which arteries are affected and the presence and severity of the symptoms. In most cases, such procedures are done with balloon angioplasty, a procedure known as percutaneous transluminal angioplasty, or PTA. A stent is typically not required, but may be needed in some cases, such as for treatment of a tear or dissection. Patients with FMD who are found to have a significant aneurysm in the brain or renal arteries may need to undergo surgery even without any symptoms. The appropriate treatment will vary with each individual depending on the size of the aneurysm, severity, location, and extent of the disease. I know that having FMD can be scary. Did you know that FMDSA is sponsoring an FMD patient registry, which has already produced over 20 abstracts and articles? Please visit our website to find more information on FMD and the latest research findings and projects that you can actually participate in. We also offer a patient toolbox, which includes an emergency alert card, patient dictionary, 
letter to family and friends, and so much more. I hope this information has been helpful, and if you still have questions, please do not hesitate to contact me.